Okay, so if this is our angle here, we call it angle theta. Theta is just a variable like x, y, z. It's just we use we tend to use Greek letters to represent unknown angles, and we use English letters to represent unknown lengths. So if that's our angle, <clears throat> what does this dimension A represent from here out to here? A is the secant of theta. What's B represent over here? <clears throat> that is the sine. What C represent? This out here? Tangent. <clears throat> sine and cosine are always completely inside the unit circle. D, this dimension here, also the same as this dimension here. That's why I labeled them D and E. This is technically it, but we use this one because it's handy. But they both represent what? <clears throat> that is the cosine. F, this length up here. That is the cotangent. And finally, G, which is the length out to here. That is the cosecant. <coughs> I want to use those triangles now to start looking at how do we apply this to right triangles. <clears throat> so whatever this angle is here, if I take this triangle right here, <clears throat> there's only one triangle that can have this angle. What features of that triangle do I know? Well, let me draw it down here. <coughs> I know that's a right angle, right? Do I know the length of this hypotenuse? It is 1. It's the radius. And since this is a unit circle, that is 1. Now, by definition, this side over here is the sine of theta, and this side down here is the cosine of theta <clears throat> from the unit circle. Now, let's say that I have another triangle that has a right angle in it, and this angle here is also theta. <clears throat> what do I know about those two triangles? <clears throat> they're not necessarily the same, but they're similar. One's an enlargement to the other. Because this angle up here has to be the same because they all triangles add up to 180. So if two of them are the same, the third one has to be. Now I'm going to label it this way. This, of course, is the hypotenuse. Because it's the side that doesn't touch the right angle. We've used that terminology before. These other two sides are called legs. But we distinguish the legs as one leg touches the angle. To touch means to be adjacent. So that's the adjacent leg. And this is the one that's across from the angle or opposite the angle. That is the opposite leg. So if I look at this now, and I want to find a missing side over here. If I know any of those sides, I can find them. For example, let's say I want to find the length of the opposite leg. <clears throat> what side of this triangle does that correspond to? The sine, right? Is there another side that I know? I know the hypotenuse of this triangle is 1, so I'm going to compare that to the hypotenuse over here. So I'm going to write it like this. Instead of doing sine over sine to hypotenuse, I'm going to do this. I'm going to compare this side to that side within this triangle. What has to go over here? Well, what compares to the sine? The opposite leg. Then what compares to the one? The hypotenuse. So the sine of an angle over 1, obviously over 1 doesn't do anything, does it? 
So what we're saying here is the sine of an angle is equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. You've probably already seen that before, just never seen exactly where it came from. <clears throat> Well, now let's look at the cosine here. We're going to compare the cosine to 1, to its hypotenuse. What has to go over here in the other ratio? Adjacent, it corresponds to the cosine, and of course 1 still corresponds to the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle over 1 is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. <clears throat> Not so bad. Now I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to look at a different triangle. Now I'm going to look at this triangle here. It goes out to here. You see which one I'm talking about? <clears throat> yeah, this is inside the circle. Inscribed in the circle, you could call it. Technically, to be inscribed in the circle, all the vertices have to be on the circle. So it's only got one vertex on the circle. Yeah. Let's look at that triangle that we just formed up there. This is still a right angle, and this is still theta. Only this time, this side here is the radius of the circle. So that's equal to 1. Does that make sense? Right here, this is 1. This side is the tangent, and this side is the secant, right? <clears throat> this is the tangent of theta, and this is the secant of theta. And we're going to compare it to that same triangle we just had, where this is theta still, and this is the hypotenuse. This is the opposite side, opposite leg, and this is the adjacent leg. And I'm just going to abbreviate them now for speed. <clears throat> so let's look at tangent. Tangent to theta, I'm going to compare it to 1 because that's the side that I have a length for. Over here, what's going to go in this other proportion or other ratio? What corresponds to tangent? Opposite. What corresponds to the 1? The adjacent. So the tangent of an angle is equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. <clears throat> Let's compare secant to 1. What over here corresponds to the secant? Hypotenuse. And then what still corresponds to the 1? The adjacent. So the secant of an angle over 1, of course, that's just the secant of the angle, equal, is equal to the length of the hypotenuse divided by the length of the adjacent side. Now, we talked about this a little yesterday. <clears throat> I'll write this out. Sine of an angle is equal to the length of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The sine is always inside the circle, right? So it's the largest the sine can be. One, because that's the radius one of the unit. circle. One unit, yeah, whatever it is. What's the smallest it can be? Actually, you can go down to negative one. <clears throat> so, it can go down to negative one. If you put in the sine of 270 degrees, it'll give you a negative one. Yep. <clears throat> So the sine must be between negative 1 and positive 1. So the sine is equal to the length of the opposite side. And that makes sense. The hypotenuse has to be the longest side of the triangle. So there's no way that the opposite side can be longer than the hypotenuse. There's no way it can be bigger than 1. <clears throat> the cosine of an angle is the length of the adjacent side over the length of the hypotenuse. <clears throat> and again, <clears throat> hypotenuse has to be bigger than the adjacent side, right? So the cosine is also between negative 1 and 1. Now you notice I put less than or equal to. Can it equal negative 1 or can it equal 1? 
Yes, it can. Um, at 90 degrees, the sine equals 1. Now, technically, it doesn't form a triangle anymore, but the sine is still 1. Because <coughs> if we have a right triangle, and theta here is 90 degrees, it never comes back together to form a triangle, does it? <clears throat> Tangent of an angle is equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. What are the limits on the tangent of an angle? <clears throat> there are none. You know what that symbol means? Infinity. You can go to negative infinity to positive infinity. There are no limits on a tangent. <clears throat> Secant of an angle is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. <clears throat> hypotenuse is always longer than the adjacent side, so the secant is always less than or equal to negative 1 or greater than or equal to positive 1. <clears throat> Cosecant we didn't do, but I'm just going to put it up there for you. Cosecant is equal to the length of the hypotenuse over the length of the opposite side. And it is the same restrictions as our secant. Less than negative 1 or greater than positive 1. <clears throat> and finally, cotangent is equal to the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the opposite side. And the cotangent, just like the tangent, can go from negative infinity to positive infinity. It can be anything. <clears throat> Cosecant. Cosecant. Yep. COS is cosine. So I'm going to have a triangle here. Sides A, B, or uh, angles A, B, and C. One convention is when we label triangles, we label the angles with capital letters, and we label the sides with small letters. Now we talked about angles being opposite, you know, the smallest angle being opposite the smallest side. So which side here is going to be affected by angle A? <clears throat> this side down here. So we're going to label that little a. It's not necessarily the adjacent side because we don't know what angle we're looking at yet. This is going to be little b, this is going to be little c. Because this is the side that's across from angle c, this is the side that's across from angle b. Now you brought up this is the adjacent, right? Well, it depends on what angle we're looking at. If I'm trying to find the sine of angle b, then I'm looking at this angle, and this would be the adjacent side, right? This would be, well, that's always the hypotenuse, no matter what angle we're looking at. This would be the opposite side. Sine uses what two sides? <clears throat> opposite over hypotenuse. Good. So if I label my sides 5 units, 12 units, and 13 units, the sine of B is going to be 5 over 13. If I divide that out, <clears throat> I could leave it as a fraction if I wanted to, or 0 
Convention is four decimal places, by the way, for signs and cosines and tangents and stuff. <clears throat> What's that? No, that's for the sine. That's not for the angle. But, well, this is the sine of angle B here is the ratio of this side to that side. Sine B is 0.3846. Yep. You could use that to get an angle if you wanted to. We're not to that point yet, though. <coughs> cosine B. Well, we're still looking at this angle. Cosine involves what two sides? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So this would be 12 over 13. <coughs> Again, you could leave it as a fraction, or you could divide it out to get 0.9231. So the cosine of angle B is 0.9231. <clears throat> Tangent of angle B. Opposite over adjacent, so that'll be 5 over 12. 0.4167. Here's where you got to be careful. If I ask you for the sine of angle A, now I'm looking at this angle right here. Is this the opposite side anymore? No, that's now the adjacent side. If I'm looking at this angle, this would now be the adjacent, and this would be the opposite. So depending on what angle you're looking at, the opposite and adjacent sides can switch spots. The hypotenuse will always be that one, but the opposite and adjacent legs can switch spots depending on the angle. So sine of A, sine of course is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's going to be 12 over 13. <laughs> Now you're going to notice something here. Sine A, cosine B. What's the relationship between them? They're the same. Because remember, cosine is really asking for the sine of the complement of B, correct? Remember, that's the definition of cosine, the, co the sine of the complement? Well, what's the complement of B? A. This is 90 degrees. These two angles have to add up to 90 degrees. Those have to be complements. So within a right triangle, the sine of A and the cos or sine of A and cosine of B have to be the same. It's like the sine of B and the cosine of A will have to be the same. So if I find the cosine of A. That's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And yes, that is 0.3846. Same as the sine of B. Does that make sense? A little bit? It'll take a while to get used to it all again. How about secant of B? Remember, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So hypotenuse is 13. If I'm looking at angle B, what's the adjacent side? Here's B. The adjacent side is 12. So 1.0833. And we said the secant must always be bigger than 1, 1 or larger, so that makes sense. You'll notice here a relationship there. What do you notice between the cosine of B and the secant of B? The reciprocals. You flip them over. 
the secant of b equals 1 over the cosine of b. You may have noticed by now that there is no secant button on your calculator. You might be wondering, how on earth are we going to calculate secants? Well, let's take a peek here. <laughs> let's say that angle A is 42 degrees. Find the sine of A, sine, find, sine of 42 degrees. So you're just going to punch in your calculator, you're going to do sine 42 equals 0. 0.6691. Now, many of you will probably not get that on your first try. Did anybody get something way different or different? Because if you did, I know why. Most of your calculators come preset in radians. Did you get the, the 0.66? Okay. You got her? Okay, anybody get something different? Yours works? Okay, good. So then how about cosine of 42? <clears throat> Same thing, cosine 42 equals 0. 0.7431. Yep. <clears throat> yep, now the other one that's built in is tangent. So tangent of 42. 0.9004. Okay, so now is where it gets tricky. See here of 42 degrees. Most of your calculators have a key like this. You see that one? Right here. It's X negative 1 key. <clears throat> It's called a reciprocal key. Some of you may be 1 over x, key like that. I have a negative 1 above my sign. Yeah, that's different. That's different. Yeah. That's a inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. We'll get to those tomorrow, hopefully. But this is just the reciprocal of it, which is different. <clears throat> So what you're going to do is this. To find the secant of 42 degrees, you're going to type in the cosine of 42 degrees, hit equals, and then press that key. So cosine 42 equals, press my 1 over x key, and hit equals. 1.3456. 1. <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just it works easier if you get used to using that x to the negative one key, because when you start to do, when you start to do, it, you can't find it. Bring your calculator up. Take a peek. If you get used to that x negative one key, that reciprocal key, it makes it a lot easier. Where is it on yours? Uh, it's too fancy. Oh, there it is, right there. So you can do five, shift. So it's second in that key there. So it's got one over a box. Okay. That's your one over X key. <clears throat> you bet. So the secant is one over the cosine. How about the cosecant? Well, that is... The sine of 42 degrees, and then that reciprocal key. <clears throat> so sine of 42, hit enter, then reciprocal, <coughs> 1.4945. Get her? And how about the cotangent? <clears throat> well, that's going to be the tangent of 42. And then reciprocal. Oops. One point 
1.1106. You got her. So the key to remember is the secant uses the cosine, cosecant uses the sine, and cotangent uses the tangent. Does that make sense? <clears throat> I'm going to give you something to practice just because it just takes time to get good at these. I'm pretty sure i got to give you a new packet for these. Page 338 to 341. It's going to be 1 through 51, the odds. <clears throat> 